the fact that the United States Congress now has set up an official office through the Pentagon to investigate UAP, unidentified aerial phenomenon, which is somewhat misleading because the military and the intelligence agencies have been tracking this since the 40s. Most of it's been in top secret programs, not accessible even to some members of the Congress or the president for that matter. And I touch on that whole issue of secrecy and how it works or doesn't work. But now there's been this massive sea change since December of 2017, when the New York Times broke this story on the front pages that there was a secret uh, UFO mm -hmm. study at the Pentagon from 2010 to roughly 2010. And a $22 million study, so they threw quite a bit of money at it. It went to a, a private research group that won the contract, Bob Bigelow, who's turns up in the book, the space pen book a couple of times, um, who's had a lifelong interest in this and went on 60 minutes a couple of years ago and just said point blank that, you know, the UFO subject is real. It's extraterrestrial in nature. And there are most likely ETs living among us. And the kind of shocked host of that interview segment said, what if we don't believe you? And he said, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's kind of the attitude one adapts after a while because the skeptics are out there and yeah, it's going to take some kind of act of global government or global governments to really do a full disclosure on this. But at this point in time, we are at an interesting place where media has finally taken it seriously and we have a dedicated office to do research and that's just at a government level at the ground level you've got the dedicated ufo researchers who've been doing this research their whole life and one in particular that i aligned with in the 90s dr stephen greer emergency room medical doctor uh, who gave up a very promising practice in north carolina and dedicated his life wow. to organization he founded, the Center for the Study of Extraterrestrial Intelligence, otherwise known as C-SETI. And part of my book is based on that period where we had some very interesting adventures together with his other team members and unfortunately some not so great encounters with national news media, which chapter eight is entirely dedicated to the way media has handled this experience, including the time that uh, C. SETI took a uh, research team to the volcano zone in Mexico. Mexico has been a hotspot for UFO sightings for, for the better part of 30 years. If you want to see flying saucers, go to Mexico, especially the volcano zone. It's about 80 miles from Mexico City. You can get over there on a bus. Um, we had a CBS news crew from 48 hours shadowing us. And they were doing a special 60 an hour on this subject and and they basically made us look like fools even though they used footage from the first night out when we an object came in and we interacted with it with, with light signaling they used that but they didn't provide any context for it so it's <laughs> pretty much useless information for anybody that saw that and it was pretty embarrassing to see us on national tv 